Hello, everyone, and welcome to the online open house for the Johns Hopkins Information Security Institute. My name is Anton Debora. I'm the executive director of the Information Security Institute. I'm an associate research scientist in the Department of Computer Science here at uh, Johns Hopkins. My, in, my research interests, in addition to information security, include assured autonomy, fault-tolerant computing, distributed systems, and uh, different types of testing. Today, we're going to talk about why Hopkins and what the advantages of joining the Johns Hopkins family are. We're going to give you a, an overview of our program in information security. We're going to talk about student and faculty research. We'll discuss the admissions process. We have a presentation about the student experience, which I think you'll enjoy watching. And then at the end, we'll have a question and answer session. First of all, at the highest level, engineering at Johns Hopkins. You've probably read, seen, heard a lot about Johns Hopkins University and especially our legacy of research. Johns Hopkins University leads the nation in uh, total research and development expenditures and has for many years uh, with a record $2.56 billion in uh, 2017. Within the Whiting School of Engineering, in addition to the academic departments, there are 25 research centers and institutes and all of us collaborate with the other eight divisions, especially the Applied Physics Lab, the world-renowned School of Medicine, the Bloomberg School of Public Health, and others. Some of the areas of expertise include, but aren't limited to, medicine and engineering, defense, information engineering, and resilient systems. But that's just a, a very short list of the many areas of, uh, of research around Hopkins. The Whiting School of Engineering mission is to provide an outstanding engineering education that is innovative, rigorous, and relevant, and prepares our graduates to be 21st century leaders. In addition, we have a lot of career resources that will help you as you embark on your career in information security, including a career center, employer networking. We have uh, an extensive network of Whiting School alumni and events throughout the year, including the alum, our alumni, and also many resources for entrepreneurship at Johns Hopkins. And in addition, within our Information Security Institute, we have our own career resources as well. A little bit about our program. The mission of the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute is to advance the field of information security through excellence in pure and applied research and educational programs. And as you're, you will hear, those two, research and education, are very closely intertwined in our Information Security Institute. A little bit about our history. Uh, we were one of the first uh, centers in the, uh, in the country dedicated to information security. We were founded about 20 years ago by Professor Jerry Mason. And uh, since 2003, we have been designated as a Department of Defense National Center for Academic Excellence, both in information assurance research and education. Here's a list of our current faculty members. And uh, you can see, uh, I'll talk a little bit about what they've been doing recently. Uh, Professor Avi Rubin is our technical director uh, you may have read about uh, Professor Rubin's work on uh, identifying vulnerabilities in voting machines uh, for elections that's gained uh, a lot of publicity and especially this being an, an election year in the United States uh, is uh, uh, also in the, in the news quite a bit. Professor Matt Green is a specialist in applied cryptography. Um, he's quoted almost every day in the news, most recently uh, with the uh, hack of the, uh, the, the cell phone of uh, the founder of Amazon. Professor Susan Holmberger Waters is another applied uh, cryptographer, as well as Abhishek Jain. 
And Yin Si Kao is an assistant professor here who specializes in web security and also looking at the intersection of machine learning um, and security. Uh, Shangyang Li is a, a senior lecturer, and you'll hear from him because he's our, also our MSSI program director. So he'll be speaking to you in a few moments. Uh, and then we have two fellows from the Applied Physics Lab, Ashutosh Duda and Lanier Watkins. In addition, we have a number of lecturers who bring the latest and greatest in knowledge from this rapidly moving field of information security. And I won't name all of them, but you can see uh, their areas of expertise ranging from computer ethics, intellectual property management, software and network security, cloud security, infrastructure protection, digital forensics, security analytics, and uh, global cyber threats and cyber policy. So you can see that our program is very holistic in nature. We want to prepare you not just in the technical aspects of information security, but all of the skills and knowledge that you'll need to succeed in uh, your chosen career path. Just a little more detail about what some of our faculty members are working on um, over the, the last couple of years. Professor Rubin uh, has uh, been directing a major effort in trustworthy health and wellness, and he is launching a new Internet of Things security effort as well, which is very interesting and very relevant. Um, Professor Holmberger Waters is part of a large scale National Science Foundation grant on what's called program obfuscation. Matt Green, uh, you may know, is one of the co authors of the famous Keys Under Doormats paper, um, arguing against um, having cryptographic backdoors in, uh, in systems. And uh, Professor Jane has continued his four year DARPA grant to develop techniques for program obfuscation and other functional encryption uh, problems, which are quite relevant and exciting. And uh, Lanier Watkins has been working on critical infrastructure protection and also drone vulnerability analysis. And there's some very interesting videos online uh, regarding drone vulnerability uh, that are by Professor Watkins and his group. We're a very dynamic institute. Uh, in education and in research and in being very involved in this field of information security in all kinds of ways. Uh, Professor Rubin has been in the news most recently talking about ransomware attacks, voting machines, and so forth. Um, Joe Kerrigan, who is our senior security engineer here in the Institute, is a co-host of a very popular podcast called Hacking Human, and I recommend that you find that and listen to some episodes. I think you'll find them to be fascinating. We also have uh, different kinds of outreach efforts, including an annual cybersecurity conference uh, in March uh, that brings in people from the region and around the country to talk about the latest issues in cybersecurity. We uh, sponsor competitions, uh, cybersecurity capture the flag and policy competitions. And uh, we also have developed a cybersecurity course that we offer uh, videos for online to community colleges. Um, and most recently, we have uh, uh, collaborated with the university in the creation of the Institute for Assured Autonomy, exploring the intersection of security and artificial intelligence. So what makes the MSSI program you're considering unique? Well. Among other things, it's the nation's first information security program that focuses on healthcare information security, if you, chose, if you choose to go that route. Uh, we have numerous other dual degree programs, including computer science, applied math, and health science. And I would say one of the most interesting things is the opportunity to conduct research here and come up with original ideas uh, that I think you'll find to be very satisfying and also a big boost for your career. You'll be able to work with our world-class faculty who, as you've seen, are leading experts in the security field. I'd also like to point out a relatively new program called Home to Homewood, which is an exciting option for you when you're admitted to the MSSI program. So this summer, 
you will be able to take up to three courses online at home before spending two full-time semesters on the Homewood campus here in Baltimore. And I encourage you to explore that option. And now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Shang Yang Li, who's the program director of the MSSI program. Hello, everybody. Uh, so my name is uh, Xiang Yang Li. I'm the program director of the Master of Science in Security Informatics uh, program. Uh, so you can see my uh, research uh, and also teaching areas. Uh, so I'm doing uh, research in intrusive detect detection, network security, uh, human factors, uh, you know, in uh, information security, uh, as well as uh, user modeling in the intelligent uh, systems. So I'm gr very glad to have the chance to talk to you today uh, to, to tell you more about, you know, the MSSI program study. Uh, so in, in our MSSI program, uh, we have two emphasis systems. Uh, so the first is we want to provide every student uh, well-rounded uh, in the learning uh, learning experience. So there are several uh, aspects to this. So there are two study tracks, uh, technology and research track and uh, policy and management track. Most of the students pursue uh, you know, there's a tech, tech, uh, PR track, technology and research track, but, but we do have a few students in every cohort, you know, to study uh, policy management, uh, you know, oriented kind of, kind of, uh, topics in uh, information security. So you will see uh, different uh, categories of uh, courses we are offering, uh, as well as, you know, offered by other academic units. Uh, so, so, so you can choose and pick uh, the problem study, the uh, courses, uh, you know, you like, you know, for your career uh, plan. The other feature of our education uh, program here is uh, doing research. So you have, you can uh, learn by conducting independent research to solve uh, practical problems with fellow students, uh, with the help of faculty members. So, so you can see on this slide, uh, on the left, on the right, Actually, uh, that is a photo of uh, some of our students doing, uh, you know, hacking uh, can, can, can now research on drones. Uh, so there are many uh, opportunities for you to do research on this campus and also beyond. So we have seminars, uh, weekly seminars, right, to introduce you to various kind of topics in industry, in government, as well as in uh, professional development. Uh, so the capstone project is a big component of your degree requirement. I will talk about that more later. Uh, so in summer, many, uh, if not all of our students, they go out to do uh, internships, uh, you know, in uh, all over the nation, uh, you know, from California to New York City to, uh, you know, this this region, this uh, you know national capital region, as well as you know in. Uh, Texas, you know, many places. Uh, students do uh, competitions, including CPF, cap capture, the, uh, capture the flag, uh, you know, technical com competitions, as well as uh, in policy oriented competitions, such as the Cyber 912 uh, uh, student challenge by, uh, sponsored by Atlantic Council, right? So, so, so really you can do a lot more just in addition to the two courses you, you will finish for your degree. By now, you are prob probably uh, already familiar with uh, the degree requirements for the for the two tracks, right? I just quickly kind of go over uh, the, the, the requirements here. So if you look at the uh, technology and the research track, uh, so you, you need to study uh, more technology courses Right. So, including five technology uh, technology courses, four of them should be in the uh, core technology courses uh, that category. And also, you must learn one crypto course. So, because uh, cryptography is so fundamental to many uh, problems and the solutions uh, in information security, um, every student has to study uh, three policy health man management uh, core courses, 
so you you have to take at least one core policy course, uh, one management core management course, and the other one can uh, come from uh, you know any of these three categories. The two additional courses will provide you this uh, flexibility, you know, to uh, to mix up you know your courses. You can even uh, take courses from other uh, you know departments such as computer science, uh, the our EP online part-time program, uh, as well as you know applied math, uh, ECE. Those are kind of popular kind of kind of uh, you know uh, subjects our students are are taking. Uh, I will talk about the capstone uh, project more later. So if you look at the policy and management track, uh, it is kind of flipped here, right? So you need to take uh, 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 more non-technology courses in core health core policy, core health, core management, as well as a special uh, fund, uh, foundational management uh, category. Uh, so, so uh, you know, for the two additional courses, you can also consider to take more uh, non-technology uh, non uh, topics. So this slide uh, lists our current uh, technology courses offered by by us as well as uh, computer science department. Uh, this probably is not the uh, complete uh, list of uh, uh, courses. Uh, so so by now, every year we are offering over 20 uh, courses in different uh, subjects. Right, these courses range from fundamental topics such as uh, crypto. So if you look at the crypto courses, actually we have uh, five. Uh, crypto courses on different levels with different flavors, you know, from uh, introduction to advanced uh, topics, uh, you know, from more theoretical uh, offerings to uh, practical uh, crypto uh, uh, topics. Uh, you can also uh, see, you know, network security, uh, web security, uh, uh, you know, just just introduction to 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 information security, security right, security and privacy in computing, kind of like security uh, one-on-one courses. But we, we are changing our curriculum uh, constantly, right? We have to, because information security is uh, such a dynamic field. You can see latest topics such as mobile and wireless security, ethical hacking, uh, blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies. You know, those are, uh, you know, up, uh, can, uh, you know, uh, dated topics in information security. Sorry. Uh, so we are offering several our own courses in uh, core policy and core management. So you can go over the uh, titles here, right? So such courses include uh, fundamental kind of, kind of concepts in, uh, you know, of uh, digital rights, of uh, privacy, as well as uh, global cybersecurity to examine the current uh, international landscape of, of security. Uh, the management uh, uh, actually aspect of information is very uh, essential, uh, such as uh, you know risk management. Uh, right, everything uh, actually we do in informa information security, uh, you know, to uh, in terms of defense is is essentially uh, risk management. How to manage risks? Uh, so Hopkins, uh, being famous for uh, its school of medicine and it, you know its hospital, hospitals, right? So uh, our students actually can take uh, core health courses offered by school of medicine and school of public health. Uh, those are online courses, uh, you know, to study health information systems. The foundational medicine course courses are uh, uh, especially for the students on the. PM track, policy and management track, but but you know other students can also consider to take uh, you know a couple uh, you know courses there because those are short seven week courses, so you you can actually combine uh, uh, you know uh, you know a few of them you know to satisfy the degree requirements. Uh, just uh, very quickly, there is a. Uh, Example uh, problem study 
but but be careful. This is for PR track students. Uh, so for this specific specific example, right, it is only for three semesters. But actually, quite a few of our students have uh, taken uh, uh, have, have uh, spent more time, uh, you know, uh, usually taking one extra semester to finish the degree. Uh, if you look at this uh, uh, plan, right. So for the first for the first two semesters, each semester you will take uh, uh, three or four regular courses, you know, a combination of technology and te non-technology courses. Uh, at the same time, uh, you need to take you need to attend seminars, uh, weekly seminars, right, to prepare for your re for your research. Uh, and then in, in the last semester, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, study. You can finish. Uh, uh, you know, courses, the, the, you know, for the for the term course requirement, as well as the capstone project. This capstone project is uh, uh, team based, so you can work with uh, a couple uh, fellow students, and and a faculty mentor will supervise this capstone project. Just to give you some uh, ideas about what our students are working on in this uh, uh, capstone uh, project uh, requirement. So in last fall, for 2019, uh, there were 12 projects by 35 MSSI students. Uh, they work with uh, uh, ISI faculty uh, mentors as well as extern external mentors actually from uh, APL, Cisco, uh, Unnot, that is a, a small research form, as well as uh, Auto ISAC, that is uh, one of the several you know, ISAC uh, organizations in the, in the US. So I will show you the list of topics on the next slide. Uh, you can see the topics are very uh, diverse. Uh, and also uh, it, it, they, they are kind of, uh, uh, you know, about the uh, research, uh, right now the research front in information security, uh, such as uh, IoT, uh, device security, data anal analytics in security, as well as uh, uh, AI, artificial intelligence system, Security and how to you know how to do uh, so-called adversary attacks on uh, you know the uh, machine learning models. So I will give you a moment you know to check out the titles of those twelve uh, uh, research projects. For more information. You can go to our website, right? Just uh, just check out this link. Uh, you will be able to see uh, all the abstracts of our uh, students' capstones uh, in the past three uh, years, uh, as well as actually there is a list of uh, publications uh, by our students, uh, you know, to uh, present their findings in uh, conferences and, and journals. Okay, so this is my last slide. I know uh, career development is very heavy on everybody's mind, right? <laughs> Just to let you know. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the the types of, uh, you know, some internship uh, positions as well as, uh, you know, the full-time positions, you can see, you can get some ideas about where our students are, uh, you know, working. Uh, so uh, most of our students they uh, go out to work for in the industry, uh, but but we do have students uh, they continue their uh, PhD study, uh, and and uh, as well as some students they they go to work in the uh, public sectors, you know, for the U.S. government or in uh, you know national labs. So that concludes my uh, segment. Uh, in the next. We will have a student to uh, to tell you about uh, you know her experience in this problem study.
Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Lee. I'm from Alabama originally, where I went to the University of Alabama in Huntsville. I got my bachelor's degree in computer science and biology from there. After leaving Alabama, I went to Florida for a few years to work in the military, specifically for the U.S. Air Force as a computer scientist. And then I received a scholarship recently to come to JHU to study security informatics. At first, I was a little bit overwhelmed by the possibilities that were at JHU, and I wasn't sure how to adapt to student life because I have working for a while. But after I came to JHU, I was pleasantly surprised because, at first, the professors are very approachable. For instance, I took five courses in my first semester of those five, three or tech-related courses and two or policy management courses, and I. I love the immersion of faculties and students in the teaching process in all my classes and professors are always available during the office hours and even outside the office hours they were still very approachable answering emails and making time to answer all my questions even over the weekend. There were tremendous resources and all the professors make sure they have plenty of class assistance to help us throughout the semester as well. And we also have our very own library in the program. And when I have trouble writing certain essays, I was able to go to her and she was able to walk me through various writing techniques and to help to refine my approach to different assignments that I had. And the students in our program are very diverse. I found myself able to form study groups and to learn a lot from my peers as well. So adjusting from working life to student life was actually not as difficult as I initially thought. Now, another great thing about JHU is the sheer variety of student organizations. I joined the Women of Writing School of Engineering, and I had a lot of fun. I was able to meet new friends from other departments, connect, connect to their community, and assist in school events, and I believe it really enhanced my experience here. And the great thing about JHU is that as an institution, they have tremendous resources that if a club does not exist, you can always apply to start one. So in my case, I was interested in blockchain technology, but we didn't have a blockchain club. So I co-founded the JHU Blockchain Club with a classmate of mine, and we're off to a great start. We have over 50 members already on the list and counting, and we're working very hard on planning upcoming events. And I think it's a testament to tremendous resources that JHU is willing to invest not just in academic experiences, but also in um, extracurricular experiences. Mm, JHU is also magnificent and like carving out paths and opportunities. There are um, many career fairs on campus. The school also provides transportation for students to go to career fairs and network of opportunities in nearby cities. We constantly receive emails on new hiring positions on campus jobs research assistantships, and class assistantships. This program is also very supportive for students to go to conferences. Um, some other classmates and I in the program were invited to the cybersecurity reception hosted by CyberWire in DC during the fall semester. I was selected to go to RSA conference in San Francisco this March. We formed a team to compete in the Cyber 912 challenge in DC, and now they're forming teams for Capture the Flag events. So there are plans to do, and the program is super supportive. I know a lot of you are deciding between JHU and other schools. I was accepted to a few schools myself, and you know, some of them are in New York City, some of them are in warmer areas with less cold and less snow. But what I found about JHU was that it was a very established and very venerable institution with tremendous resources in a very hit part of this country. So for that reason, I absolutely have no, no regrets about my decision to choose JHU, and I think it is a fantastic place to be. And I couldn't ask for a better experience. So with that, I will end my presentation and turn it to the next speaker. Thank you. Hi, my name is Revely Niles. I'm going to be discussing the admissions process with you today. I'm the Academic Program Administrator for the Information Security Institute. Next. So today we'll discuss the admissions process. Um, the deadline is March 1st, 2020, 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Uh, the listed application requirements are all required. Um, a couple of notable points about each of these items, the statement of purpose, typically one to two pages is sufficient for explaining why you feel like you're a great candidate for the program and what your educational and professional background is that supports it. Um, your two letters of recommendation, those can come from faculty. We prefer at least one of them be from faculty, but if you have been in the workplace, your manager or any other person that might be able to speak to your skills and abilities will also accept a letter from them as well. Um, for international, international applicants only, we will require a TOEFL as well. And please be mindful, you are able to apply with unofficial documents. If you are admitted and are enrolled into the program, then we will require official documents from you. Um, sometimes you might have been involved in research or there's some sort of project that you really think provides value to your application, feel free to upload that as supporting material, but it's not required, um, but you can upload uh, some supporting material if you feel like you have that. And lastly, um, the application fee. So what's listed here is the typical profile of an admitted student. I want to definitely caution you that these are not rigid guidelines. We have students that vary um, in both directions. And so please you know, recognize that we do look at you as a holistic applicant. We are not just drilling you down to your scores. So definitely if you feel like you don't um, meet or reach some of these metrics, please still apply because we will look at your complete history, not just your scores. Now we do offer some scholarships here in the Information Security Institute. I will say they are um, contingent upon funding being available. Um, and so we have outlined scholarships that are for US students and for international students. Some of the, of the deadlines are fast approaching. Please uh, get on our website at isi.jhu.edu so that you can see the specific deadlines that correlate to each scholarship. Um, do recognize with the ISIF scholarships, um, those will, your application will automatically be reviewed for those. Um, they will also, each of the different scholarships has different requirements for application materials. So please make sure you view that very carefully. Um, some of them just require you to submit a one page um, additional document with your application explaining why you would like that uh, scholarship. So please get on the website and take a note of those. But again, it is subject to funding availability. Thank you, and we will now take questions from you. I'll be asking Dr. Deborah and Dr. Lee to join me. Will this be recorded for later? So yes, this presentation will be downloaded and recorded. We'll have it on the website within a week. And if there are any audio gaps, we'll fix that so you have all the information. Is the MS in cybersecurity the same as the MSSI program? Uh, I, I, I believe uh, that is referring to the uh, MS in cybersecurity program offered by the, uh, by the engineering for professionals. So, so I, you know, let, so, so that's, let's just cl to clarify, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, these are two different programs, uh, both offered by School of Engineering. So the MS in cybersecurity is a part-time uh, online uh, program. Uh, our program is, uh, is the only, you know, full-time on-campus, in-classroom uh, kind, of, kind of program. So they, they suit the different uh, uh, students, right? If you are very busy kind of working professionals, maybe you should check out the MSS in uh, cybersecurity program. Uh, so I, I believe that's, that, that is what it about. And they have separate application that's uh, right. yeah. processes. That's yeah. right, two, two separate programs. Okay. Is there any official JHU CTF team? I assume that's capture the flag like we were talking about earlier? Yes. Um, it's not so much an official team, but we're becoming very involved in capture the flag competitions with uh, a fair amount of success, I might add. Mm -hmm. So um, 
we probably at this point are participating in um, three or so competitions yeah. at yes. least. And I think that number is growing as the interest among the student population grows as well. So we, uh, we heavily support uh, the uh, participation and capture the flag competitions and other kinds of competitions. And we're also willing to um, support student travel for those. And we also provide um, faculty mentors as well. So we're, we're all about the capture the flag competitions. And where have previous students interned or been employed at? Um, it, it, it changes uh, from year to year. I think I showed one slide of uh, uh, the places our students went to in last uh, summer. Uh, so I will say it's pretty much all over the nation, right? Uh, you know, of course, like Silicon Valley, you know, in California, that's, you know, many students uh, go there. Uh, New York City is another place actually uh, because because of, you know, the, the financial industry there, as you know, there are many uh, actually forms uh, to support those those you know big banks, big uh, uh, financial firms, the so-called DMV uh, region, right? The DC, Maryland, and Virginia. This is where the national capital is. The the uh, you know the NIST, uh, DHS, uh, the uh, you know the DOD agencies are. So a lot of uh, you know, activities going on in this in this area. So, so many students also find uh, uh, some internship opportunities opportunities here, and then there are other places such as Texas, uh, Seattle, right? Where you know, where there there are IT jobs, then mm -hmm. there there are all students. I would add that uh, the institute has about 600 alumni from our MSSI program over the years. And uh, as you know, the information security field is vast and continuing to grow. So it's not only companies that are focused on information security, but it's companies that are concerned about information security and need information security professionals and specialists uh, to defend their networks and their systems uh, from attack. So our students are finding career opportunities all over and in all kinds of uh, verticals. Uh, it just, it really comes down to what you want to do. The opportunities are there. And especially with your Johns Hopkins degree under your belt, really the sky is the limit. Great, and our final question, are there barriers to international student employment options? Uh, Frankly speaking, uh, I mean, let, 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 let me probably uh, put it in this way, right? Uh, because of uh, the shortage of uh, uh, work for, workforce or talents, you know, needed for information security, uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, there in industry, in government agencies. Uh, but of course, you know, information security is, uh, is a sensitive uh, kind, of, kind of area. Uh, so for example, for U.S. government job uh, agencies, right, like the job there, they will require citizenship. Uh, so, so that is why the U.S. students in our program they have no problem of finding a job. Uh, I, I'm not finding one job. Actually, they have multiple probably job offers. You know, before they gra even graduate. Uh, but most of our international students also uh, find a job. Uh, just uh, you know, uh, close to graduation or just around graduation, uh, uh, but 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 you can understand, uh, you know, most of you know international students they will look into the industrial, right? Look into the private sectors. Uh, so so the, the I think the important uh, point I want to make here is uh, really uh, you need to you need to uh, uh, prepare yourself, uh, uh, you know, proactively for for future. Uh, you know, career, your, your, your career plan. It doesn't matter if it's uh, finding a good job or it is to continue your academic study. So, so you, you need to get ready uh, to, you know, to, to strengthen yourself in courses, in research. And also as the uh, institute, uh, the, the program, uh, we, we are uh, pro providing many uh, kind of training, uh, such as, you know, seminars on how to, 
how to do even interview, how to write your resume. Uh, so those are important resources you should take advantage of. Right. We have uh, many resources, as we've talked about, to help you prepare. Um, and I know uh, many of you want to work in the United States, and that's terrific. And there are many opportunities. Of course, there are always there are companies that are uh, uh, more supportive than others and have the ability to sponsor international uh, employees. Uh, but the other thing is that um, we encourage you to look at the entire world as your opportunity. And we have many alumni working all over the world uh, for different organizations uh, in different subfields. So it's, it's really an exciting, literally a world of opportunity that awaits you here at the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute. And uh, I really hope that you will seriously consider applying and coming to join us here in the fall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if you would like to look at our website, that's listed for you on the site. If you would like to email myself or Dr. Lee, our information is there and available to you. And thank you for joining us today.